On July 30th, 2025, an 8.7 magnitude earthquake off the coast of Russia shook the entire region. The seismic waves spread along tectonic belts, transmitting pressure to the Tancheng Lujiang fault system in central China. The immediate question arose, if that energy reached the Three Gorges Dam, what would happen? Yet the more frightening hypothesis is that the distant jolt is only a spark for a system already riddled with risk. The greatest danger does not lie outside, but within the dam itself. Compressed geology, contradictory design, and fragmented concrete now shifting. The Three Gorges is not merely enduring earthquakes. It could itself become an earthquake trigger. When the dam blocked the Yangtze River in 2003, it did not just stop a river. It awakened the ground beneath. The millennia-old silence of the Huangling anticline was broken. After reservoir levels exceeded 150 meters, the frequency of earthquakes in the area soared seven to eight times. For years, these tremors were downplayed as harmless groans of a giant settling in. But the data told another story. Months later, over 600 small aftershocks struck Badong. In 2004, a 3.0 magnitude quake cracked houses and sent rocks tumbling. In 2008, when water first reached 175 meters, a 4.6 magnitude quake spread across hundreds of square kilometers. In 2012, a single day recorded 152 tremors. The climax came on December 16, 2013, when a 5.1 magnitude earthquake erupted inside the reservoir itself. From then on, reassurances lost all value. A study published in Geophysical Research Letters revealed the truth. These were tectonic earthquakes triggered by the reservoir. High-pressure water seeped deep into the ground, prying open limestone fractures and awakening ancient faults. Researchers identified a 15-kilometer-long fault, LCH, never surveyed before construction. The numbers are terrifying. Scientists calculated that LCH could unleash a 6.5-magnitude earthquake. When modeled against the Three Gorges Dam, the conclusion was a death sentence written in probabilities. Up to a 13% chance, more than 1 in 8, that the shaking would exceed the dam's official design limit. And once the killer awakens, it never goes back to sleep. The terror continues. In the following years, abnormal signals piled up. In March 2014, Zigui was jolted by quakes of magnitude 4.2 and 4.5. In June 2017, two quakes measuring 4.8 and 4.6 at Zigui Badong collapsed 160 houses. Ground acceleration reached 0.165 g, several times the safety standard. The world has seen this before. In 1967, India's Koina Dam triggered a 6.3 magnitude quake that killed 180 people. The Three Gorges is edging toward the same fate. Science has delivered an undeniable verdict. The dam has created its own killer, and that killer is still alive. The proven local seismic hazard is only the beginning of the crisis. The real danger lies in what happens when this violent seismic zone collides with deeper flaws within the dam's very structure. Any strong earthquake is a grave threat to any dam, but the Three Gorges is uniquely unprepared because it was built upon foundations of lies, both literal and political. The first lie is the foundation itself. The official story sold to the world was that of a solid and stable granite block. In reality, the geology is a treacherous landscape called the Huangling Anticline. This is not a simple solid mass, but a colossal geologic structure bent and compressed over millions of years. Like a metal bar bent too many times, strained and weakened. This unstable formation is cut through by a dense web of faults, such as the Zhuangzi, Xianushan Zhuangzi, and the Shanavshan fault systems, all of which are growing more seismically active. The dam was never set upon a stable island, but rather dropped into a cocoon of living fractures. The second lie is the design itself. Even a flawless blueprint would be endangered on such a foundation. Yet the design of the Three Gorges Dam contains fatal errors. The engineers made a grave hydraulic miscalculation, treating the 600-kilometer reservoir as if it were a flat bathtub. The consequences were catastrophic. In 2009, while the water level at the dam wall stood at the safe 145 meters, 600 kilometers upstream in Chongqing, the water had surged to 183 meters, flooding the city. The entire safety margin of the dam was calculated on an illusion.
This design flaw is compounded by the dam's contradictory purpose. It is trapped in a permanent conflict between safety and profit. To control floods, water levels must be kept low. To generate electricity, water must be kept high. Professor He Weifong summarized this paradox. When the downstream is in drought, the dam must store water. When the downstream floods, the dam must release it. This schizophrenic mode of operation reflects a system that prioritizes state revenue over human safety. Every day, engineers are forced to gamble with the lace of millions in exchange for power output. Even the most basic safety function, flood control capacity, is a deliberate deception. A confidential letter from Chief Engineer Zhang Guangdo revealed that officials knew the figure of 22.15 billion cubic meters was grossly inflated, unattainable without crippling the dam's economic function. This truth was concealed so that the project, a symbol of political pride, could not be stopped. Public safety had already been sacrificed on the altar of political ambition long before the first batches of concrete were poured. The final lie, and the heaviest of all, is the physical structure of the dam itself. The image of a seamless, monolithic wall of concrete is an illusion. According to expert Wang Wei Luo, the dam is actually composed of dozens of separate concrete blocks, each standing only by its own weight upon the bedrock, without being anchored deep into the ground. This fragmented design hides a terrifying secret. The dam was designed to move. The blocks were expected to slide slightly and press against each other to form a tight seal. But this only works if every block shifts evenly and in alignment. In reality, they are moving unevenly, twisting and grinding against one another. This misaligned movement has created cracks along the joints. It explains early reports of structural flaws, such as engineer Fan Shao's 2003 admission of lateral displacement, meaning the dam was already shifting askew. Cracks wide enough for a grown man's hand to slip through are the result of these massive blocks twisting apart. Dr. Wang Weilu described the structure not as a solid iron wall, but as a block of Swiss cheese, riddled with voids from shoddy construction, as well as countless holes and channels carved out to build ship locks and ship lifts. The government's hypocrisy is exposed in its own regulations. After boasting the dam could withstand anything short of a nuclear strike, they quietly issued rules banning kites and drones near the area. A history of concealment casts a long shadow. After the Yangtze floods of 2016, the dam's final acceptance report, which was supposed to be published that year, never appeared. I am. To this day, the world's largest dam has never been officially certified as completed and safe. So how will a structure so compromised collapse? And what final shock will bring down the very foundations of these lies? If disaster strikes, there are two scenarios. First, a 6.0, 6.5 magnitude earthquake triggered by the LCH fall. Second, remote stress transmitted back, resonating with the strained foundation. Either path leads to the same predictable next step, massive landslides. More than 4,000 danger points have been identified, grouped into 214 large sliding zones. A single mountain slope collapsing into the reservoir would generate an inland tsunami. Compressed within the valley, surging higher and slamming directly into the dam. Inside the control room, operators are trapped. Their system, based on flawed hydraulic assumptions, shows only the illusion of a calm, flat reservoir. What is actually approaching is a colossal wall of water. While the reservoir itself is being held at the dangerous near 175-meter mark for power generation, already filled to the brim, they face an impossible choice. Two forms of destruction. Either let the wave overtop the dam, its force scouring the downstream foundation and dragging the whole structure to collapse. Or in a desperate attempt at self-preservation, open the spillways and unleash a raging flood, pouring death onto tens of millions living downstream. When the wave hits, it does not strike a solid monolith, but a chain of loosely linked blocks. High pressure water seeps through cracks, raising internal stresses, twisting the already misaligned blocks. Joints split apart, geometric weak points, the ship locks, lifts, and excavation cuts, become rupture mouths. A local failure could cascade into systemic collapse. The dam will not fall from one crack alone. 
but from the simultaneous shattering of a series of optimistic assumptions. So what are we left with? A ticking time bomb paired with a regime that refuses to admit it exists. The path forward requires holding the Chinese Communist Party accountable. Governments worldwide must stop accepting Beijing's hollow reassurances and demand the long-delayed final inspection and acceptance reports. For the rest of us, the task is to break the CCP's wall of silence. The evidence is already there, from peer-reviewed studies to detailed reports of the dam's fatal flaws. We must keep sharing, debating, and amplifying the voices of experts who have warned for years. The Three Gorges Dam stands as a monument to the reckless arrogance of the CCP. The Sword of Damocles hangs over the Yangtze River. The question now is whether the world will force the regime that hung it there to take responsibility before the thread finally snaps.